Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Haggai 1 and the word of the Lord that came to Haggai on the first day of the sixth month, the sacred month Elul. So let's just step down through some of these verses in this chapter and pull out some of the highlights of what's going on here. As this date could be significant when it comes to the third temple, that temple that is to be built on the hearts of humanity. Well, what's interesting in this chapter is that we'll find out that it was on the first day of the sixth month that the word of the Lord came to Haggai concerning the building of that third temple. Now, Haggai was a prophet. And during this time, although Judah had been freed from the Babylon bondage, they still had not constructed a temple and didn't really have a homeland yet because Jerusalem was still destroyed. Well, it was on the first day of the sixth month that the word of the Lord came to Haggai and he went to talk to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of the high priest, concerning the rebuilding of the temple. Now, we understand that their captivity ended in 536 BC. Darius II became ruler in 424 BC. So here we are in the second year of Darius the king, which would have been about 422 BC, but yet they haven't gotten the idea to go and start rebuilding Jerusalem yet. That's over a hundred years. And so our father is coming to the prophet Haggai saying, hey, these people ain't even thinking about building my house back yet. As we see there in verse 2. Were they stalling or what's going on there? Well, before we get too harsh on this, guys, let's understand our current situation. Talking about the third temple that is being built on our hearts, the hearts of all of humanity. Well, look how much progress all of humanity is making towards the construction of that house. How many people are actually trying to build our father's house on their hearts? We are stalling too, and maybe for the same reasons. If you think of where we live as a modern day Babylon, I'm sure those people there were enjoying the culture and civilizations of the Babylon of the day, taking advantage of worldly things. Well, that is exactly what's going on now as we are delaying in building the third temple. But let's go on. So then came the word of the Lord telling Haggai to go to Zerubbabel and the son of the high priest and say, Is it time for you to dwell in your own houses while the house of the Lord lay waste? You guys are building your house. What about building my house back? Consider your ways, says the Lord. So it was on this day that our father is putting on the hearts of the prophet, the ruler or the governor. And the high priest to start considering the construction of the temple. Now notice this part down here in verse 6. The language kind of changes a little bit. As if the father is tying their poverty or their misfortunes to the condition of the temple. It says, you have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Saying that your efforts are in vain. You're not really getting the fruit of your labors. Now this implies that they were covenant breakers, which they probably were. Hanging out there in Babylon. You can imagine not many of the citizens of Babylon were hurrying to keep the feast days and the other rules of the covenant. I mean, again, look at how we live today. Do you see a lot of the citizens of modern day Babylon trying to keep the commandments, statutes and the judgments that you find over in Exodus chapter 20 through 23? Well, you read over in that covenant how you are supposed to get all of these blessings when you start to keep the covenant. And a lot of those verses that talk about the blessings talk on the things that are mentioned here in verse 6 of Haggai chapter 1. Food, drink, clothing, shelter, 
those are the promises of keeping the covenant and now that they're being mentioned here how the people how Judah doesn't have these provisions they are still yet breaking the covenant which is what got them in trouble in the first place you have to remember that when the children of Israel and Judah obeyed the covenant they prospered but then once they start breaking the covenant they suffered and after many years of suffering in a covenant breaking status they were invaded and imprisoned then the temple was burned and they were led captive into other lands that's the way it works and that's the way it works now I think the biggest problem is is that people don't understand who Israel is today see Israel started off as one people group with highly identifiable features if you understand who they truly were you can easily recognize the descendants of Israel today but the thing is those original Israelites have been and are being supplanted by other people groups Japheth is actually dwelling in the tents of Shem if you understand what I mean I don't like to get into race too much on my channel primarily because of what I'm going to say next those original Israelites although they still have blood ties and still have an inherent however suppressed relationship with the Most High are not automatically included in the people group known as spiritual Israel in other words our father does not focus his attention on a race of people as he did back in the day although they still have blessings on their life in today's time his focus is on spiritual Israel and to be spiritual Israel means that you obey the covenant the laws given by Moses Exodus chapter 20 through 23 any people group that obeys those rules will become his people and will become what's called spiritual Israel that is where the Jewish people came from in the first place these were a group of people in Poland Russia Germany and other nations descending from Caucasia or Japheth who somehow got their hands on the Torah reading and understanding the covenant and started keeping those rules of the Bible and they have been blessed ever since except during the times when they stepped away from that covenant and just like the Israel of old they were invaded they were enslaved they were even killed that's just the way it works that is a lot of the reason why the polytheistic religions of the world tend to move towards a materialistic relationship with our father in other words they like figurines and pictures and other items that they can call Jesus instead of having a relationship with the spiritual Jesus the real Jesus that dwells in our conscience they choose a more materialistic relationship because idols don't harm them they don't help them either but they're not going to bring plagues on them when they're not obedient anymore this is unique to the God of the Bible when you do good you will prosper when you worship him everything will go fine for you but when you stop worshiping him properly and stop following his rules things go horribly wrong for you and a lot of people don't like that idea because they like to keep their gods in a box they like to pull them out worship them when they want to and when they're finished they put them back in the box and forget about them until they think they need them again well if you do that with our father where for instance if you find yourself in trouble and find yourself praying and start running down to the church or running down to the priest and grabbing your Bible and start obeying his commandments sure things will get better for you but then once they get better you decide to stop and, and put down the scripture and put down the covenant and say I'm fine now well things are probably going to be worse than when you started but let me go on 
Here in verse 8, our father is telling the Haggai to tell Zerubbabel and Joshua to go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. The house of the Lord, which we call the second temple. And he says that he will take pleasure in it and will be glorified in it. Now, verse 9 seems to be confirming that connection that I thought was made in verse 6 between their poverty and the house of the Lord. In fact, it comes out and says it directly. Starts off talking about how you looked for much and lo, it came to little. And even what you did find, he blew on it. Why did he blow on it? Why did you find little? Why did you not get enough to eat or enough to drink? Or why was your clothing not adequate? Or your pocket seemed to have holes in it. Why did all of this happen? Say if the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. So this applies to us today. We're focusing on our own houses. And not concerned with the house of the Lord. The third temple. We need to learn to start building in the third temple. And one of the ways we can learn to do this is by way of a playlist that you'll find at the end of this video on classes from the similitudes that my wife and I did from the Shepherd of Hermits. You can look in the description of this video and find a link to the Shepherd of Hermits and read the text for yourself. But this is a very sophisticated book written in parables or similitudes. And I personally have over 20 years of experience reading this book. So if you check out that playlist where we do a verse by verse study of the Shepherd of Hermas, I believe you'll get a greater understanding of what's actually going on after you have read the whole book or even before you have read the book. So check out the Shepherd of Hermas and or that playlist so that you can understand how, why, when, and where the third temple will be built on the hearts of humanity. Like I said, this is a sophisticated book. Now he continues on to talk about these curses. You can see there in verse 10. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land. All of this is going on even after the 70 years of captivity has ended. Why? Because they haven't taken the time to rebuild the temple. The temple is extremely important. And you think that our temple, the second temple, was destroyed in even before 70 AD and we haven't taken the time to build it back? Well, look at the world of today. Do you think we're in a blessed status or in a cursed status? He brought a drought upon the land, the mountains, the corn, the new wine, and the oil. Which, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, are all tied to the blessings that we were supposed to get when we keep the covenant. When we keep the covenant, all of these things are blessed. But when we stop keeping the covenant... All of these things are cursed. And it should be noted that the new covenant and the third temple are tied together. The more I understand about the new covenant, the new Jerusalem and the third temple, I'm coming to the conclusion that they are actually all the same thing. We're actually talking about the same event. When we're talking about the new covenant, we're talking about the third temple being built on the hearts of humanity. And how and why do I say that? Because they're actually going to be placed by the same person, our father, in the same place, which is our heart or our conscience. Both of them are going to be built on our conscience. By whom? By our father. The only question is, will they be built at the same time? And I believe they are. I believe they are tied together. Verse 11 goes on to talk about the land or the ground that bringeth forth. Talking about vegetables and our crops. Upon the men, which is talking about us. And upon our cattle, where we get our meat from. And upon the labor of our hands. 
this is definitely talking about the covenant this is tying the covenant and the temple together so as you're listening to this video I hope you're hearing the spirit inside of you jumping up and down saying I want to build the third temple I want to build the temple I want to rebuild the wastelands listen to that voice you see all of these blessings associated with it if you were to do so so I would advise you to listen to it jump over and read Exodus chapter 20 through 23 that's probably the first thing you can do making sure that you understand what's going on there in that book of the covenant and if you have any questions you can come back over and ask us here that's what we're here for to help you guys as much as we can we are the repairers of the breach repairing the paths to dwell in as you read about over there in Isaiah chapter 58 which reminds me the other thing that we should be doing is preparing for the feast days and the Sabbath day those are the most important things that we can be doing in order to rebuild the covenant I mentioned it in a class not too long ago that is the only way you can know who the father's people really are there's over 600 commands in the Old Testament of the Bible in the in fact the first five books of the Old Testament of the Bible has over 600 commands rules but many of those rules are negative rules like don't do this and don't do that you can't tell our father's people from a negative rule just because I look at a person and he's not murdering anybody or not stealing from somebody does not mean that he is a child of God or spiritual Israel as we talked about a little bit earlier no the only way that you can know that a person is spiritual Israel is if they are actually following the affirmative commands those are the commands telling you that you have to do something and many of those commands tell you that you have to honor the Sabbath day that you have to keep the feast days that are talked about over there in Leviticus 23 so how do you know if a person is a child of God how do you know if a person is spiritual Israel what is the only way that you can know if a person is truly following our Creator and our Father if he's keeping the feast days if he's doing Passover if he's doing unleavened bread if he's afflicting his soul on atonement day Pentecost tabernacles that's the only way to know you know there's a lot of youtubers on here trying to teach you this and trying to teach you that if you ever have a question on whether they are a true follower of Christ if they really believe in the word or not to believe in Christ means to believe in the word so you ask them do you really believe in Christ do you really believe in the word you should ask them are you keeping the Sabbath day are you keeping the feast days and if they are not they are lying to you they are teaching you false doctrine probably telling you that you're going to somehow escape all of the troubles that are coming on the world well you ain't escaped yet and these troubles are getting closer to home you might want to find yourself grounded in the Word of God and get away from some of these false Christs that was promised to you in Matthew chapter 24 we read in scripture after scripture including over there in the book of Deuteronomy how his laws are the mark between our eyes and on our hands even his feast days are a mark on our eyes and between our hands those are the mark of our father so if you don't have the mark of the father if you're not keeping his feast days and obeying his covenant do you have the mark of the beast I need to think about that for a moment but let's go on so down here in verse 12 you see that Zerubbabel and Joshua as well as the remnant of the people obey the voice of the Lord their God you hear about a remnant over there in the book of Revelation and it's talking generally about the same people 
the people that were left after the rest went astray. And this is what we were talking about earlier, how there's how the original bloodline Israelites do not have an automatic pass into the kingdom of heaven is because many of them went astray. Even though they may look like bloodline Israel today, look at them. Are they acting like bloodline Israel? No. Many of them have taken on the Babylonian ways even to this day. I would go as far as to say most of them have become Babylonian. Well, it is this remnant, these few who have remained that's talked about over there in the book of Revelation. These are the people that fear the Lord. And so they're going to actually start rebuilding the temple. And they have the Lord's help with them right there in verse 13. You can see that. And if you understand anything about the temples, the Lord has always played a big part in the building of the temples, as you can imagine. Or maybe you can't because the angels are the ones that actually built the first temple. You may not be aware of that unless you've read books like the Testament of Solomon. Humans played a small part in the building of that temple, just like in the building of the ark and maybe even in the building of the pyramids. I know for sure the ark was and I know for sure the temple was, but it's probably true, too, that the pyramids were all built by angels, at least the first pyramid. Verse 14 says, And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all of the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Now, that's probably the reason why you are listening to this video, unless you're part of Coaching the Fights, Hermes Academy's Hater Nation which only watch my videos to post up negative comments or whatever. I appreciate you guys too. Helps me to gain merits or whatever. Unless you're one of those guys, your spirit is actually being stirred up for you to start the construction of the third temple. And again, I remind you, because it's extremely important, Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23. You can listen to it. You can read it. That is the covenant that we're under now. The new covenant has not been started yet. It has not been built on the hearts of humanity. And the reason why you know that is because you know that Exodus chapter 20 through 23, which is the current covenant, has not been engraved on your heart. That's what the new covenant is about. The father is going to take the current covenant and write those laws on your heart. Those same laws are going to be written on your heart. That hasn't taken place yet. That will happen with the third temple. And I'm going to start a little speculating here because of the father has only started bringing this to my attention here in the last few days. And of course... It takes lots of time, lots of meditation, prayer, and fasting in order to get a full understanding of everything our Father is trying to tell us sometimes. But the way I'm understanding it now is that those that are the most prepared, those that have already started embracing the old covenant, will be the first to have the third temple built on their hearts. And it appears as though... This third temple can somehow start to be built or start its completion in the year 2020 for those who are the most prepared. But for 42 months, the Gentiles will be trampling the courts, meaning this third temple will be around them, but they won't be able to take advantage of it because they're not prepared in other words they are not obeying the rules of the bible they are not obeying the word of god they're taking the messiah's name in vain they're saying i am a christian but they're not doing what the bible says do that's what it means to take the name in vain they are the ones that's going to be outside of 
the temple trampling on the courts as we prepare for things like the mark of the beast the so-called antichrist and the world is going through all of these plagues that you read about over in the book of Revelation it is this new covenant New Jerusalem the third temple that's going to be the protections that people need I'm not going to say humanity because a lot of humanity is going away a lot of people are going to die during these plagues but it is those that have this temple built on their hearts those that are prepared and obedient to the covenant that will have angelic help to protect them and preserve them and lead them to safety and food and water and clothing during the most tribulous times of the apocalypse that will have these individuals to be saved from the tribulation so that they can emerge on the other side of the tribulation ready to repopulate the earth just like Noah did that's the mission of the 144,000 and that multitude that will be standing with them these are the few millions of people that will survive this apocalypse that's going to have to repopulate the entire earth a lot of people are going away a lot of people are going away there's a lot of people that's looking forward to that day surprisingly but I said I'm gonna stop talking about them people too much so let's go on verse 16 says in the 4 and 20th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king is when they actually started the construction of the second temple so this is an important date too you have the first day which starts on the 19th in the evening time sunset on the 19th with the full day being Thursday the 20th that's when the word of the Lord came to Haggai but then their hearts were stirred to build the temple 23 days later on the 24th day of the sixth month that stirring if it were 2020 would have occurred on September the 12th 2020 now mind you it would have actually started the evening before which would have been September the 11th 2020 so will 9-11 2020 be the start of the construction of the third temple on the hearts of humanity we've done several classes on 2020 2020 is an extremely important year and hopefully for you new guys to the channel it would excite you get your spirit stirred up so that you will want to start keeping the Sabbath day minding the holy feast days so that you will go in and learn to start keeping the covenant start keeping the Sabbath day holy and start keeping the feast days these feast days are extremely important as we've talked about you can read about these feast days over in Leviticus 23 these are the feast of the seventh month and one of the main things about the day of atonement is that we have to fast which you can read about over there in Isaiah chapter 58 that's the only book in the Bible that tells you what a proper fast looks like and we have to take off work we're not allowed to work on that day and since it is a Monday some of us will need to put in a leave form but we'll talk more on that as those days approach as well as the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot as it is called we'll talk about that one which is a week long feast and lasts for eight days this feast many of us are required to sleep in tents so a lot of us will start trying to find us a tent if we don't have one already so that we can be prepared to sleep either on the roof of our house in the backyard of our house or somewhere out the door on these days here I hesitate to mention it because I don't know if it's right or not but a lot of people celebrate this feast day under the dining room table I think I might have did that one year where you make a tent out of the dining room table 
But like I said, I don't know that that is acceptable because I personally believe that the great earthquake, when it does happen, will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. That's highly speculated, I must say. When I say something that I can't back up with the scripture, I have to warn you guys that this is what I think. And this is what I think. I think that the great earthquake is going to happen during the week of tabernacles. Why? Because everybody, or at least all of our father's people, is supposed to be sleeping in a tent. And not inside of a building that can fall on your head. If your tent falls on your head in the middle of the night... All you'll do is get up, put the tent pegs back in the ground, and go back to sleep. But if your house falls on you, you're going to be in a bad way for a while. But anyway, enough speculating. Let's jump back over here to Haggai and 1. And one last thing that I can mention here before we close this video out is how this could all be pointing to a secret rapture I've heard this term used before I haven't really used it myself until today and this video is the first time you heard me say the phrase secret rapture but think about it if you only have the spirit of the remnant who is now going in to construct the third temple which is to be built on the hearts of humanity three and a half years before the rest of the world even knows about it this third temple is that not a secret rapture and of course I'm using the word rapture with the traditional definition of the word and that is a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. So how could it not be a secret when the rest of the world will be intentionally trying to ignore these guys as they want to remain in a Babylonian type culture and don't want to embrace the ways of the kingdom of heaven just yet. And plus is only affecting the remnant. This is what I believe they call your secret rapture. But I said I was going to stop speculating. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got something out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. Check out these end screens that are popping up right now. Pointing you to some videos that you should be highly interested in right now and may our father bless you and keep you and may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may our father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace I love you guys Godspeed and Shalom